Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. What is it you people do again? You're not tech support, you're trying to avoid paying your bills. Man up. We need to translate all the procedures. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. What is it you people do again? One of my jobs working senior line at Dollar Telco is to help other departments when they need technical input they can't get from frontline. Unfortunately they don't always try frontline first, and we often get calls that frankly never needed our, nor sometimes frontline's, input at all. Solidary has its bounds and sometimes it's time to point out there's room for improvement. Bytewave, senior line, Bytewave, you may send me your ticket. Recoveries, hey, no ticket, I'm calling from recoveries? I need your help tracking down someone with a huge bill who vanished off the face of earth. Here's the account number for Giles Fraser, he owes us a little over $2,000, has been cut off for a couple months, but we can't contact him. Can you tell me if his landline was in use since? Bytewave, well, you can look at the landline usage through the billing system, but since I'm doing so now know the landline hasn't been in use in this account since the last contact we had with Giles Fraser. Recoveries, oh? That's fine, we'll close down the account and mark it as unrecoverable, thank you. Quick search based on other account parameters. Oh for heaven's sake. Bytewave, wait a moment. Has anyone tried a search based on birth date, mother's name, or really, anything else before contacting technical senior line? Recoveries, yeah. We always test the basics first. Bytewave, I just shut down the automatic recording on this call because your union staff too, but. The very same day Giles Fraser vanished off the face of earth, an account under the name of Jules Fraser went up at the same damn address, with the same birth date and the same mother's name. What is it you people do again? Recoveries, air. Oh. Well we can't check every possible combination of. Bite wave, this can slide, but I get too many of these calls. Making sure new accounts are in the clear is recovery's job. If you need systems to provide a very small script to automate half your job, I could make that happen quite easily. Recoveries, you can't possibly be. Bytewave, no, last thing I want to do, but you guys need to get your house in order. Request a department-wide meeting with your union rep, they have to grant it, and say your training is inadequate because no offense, but when it comes to identifying this kind of customer it is. The union rep will get everyone a week's worth training on the clock as easy as making toast. And hopefully when we look at an account next time, it's going to be worth both our time. Recoveries, that's a little harsh but. I guess a refresh couldn't hurt, training on the clock is hard to turn down. I'll speak to her. Going to put someone on the Jules Fraser account, thanks for the help there. Bytewave, a pleasure as always. You know, I meant no offense, but the only way we win this game is by being significantly better than any subcontractor. That's why as far as I'm concerned, the bar is higher for union staff. Recoveries. Gotta agree with that. Thank you. Bytewave, of course. Thank you for choosing Senior Line. The customer was swiftly tracked and forced to pay his outstanding fees to retain services. As much as I was disappointed recoveries didn't figure this easy one out on their own, it was ultimately easy to solve, and if it helped in any way improve the overall in-house training great call. All of Bytewave's tales on TFTS. You're not tech support, you're trying to avoid paying your bills. Man up. Senior staff's line at my telco has a, very secret, direct priority number that bypasses everything. We not only refuse to write it down anywhere, we even deny it exists at all unless someone has a valid reason to need it, most of management aren't even aware it does. Of course, no matter how well you keep a secret, anyone can punch in random numbers and might end up talking to the prime minister's secretary. In the same fashion, anyone can hand out false random numbers to their credit card company. 
And so our secret number somehow ended up on the call sheet of a third-party debt collection agency. It should be a simple matter of telling them I'm not the Justin McKenzie you're looking for, and that they're calling a business line in a call center for them to take us off their sheet, right? Nope. We told them over and over, and they kept calling. Very unpleasant calls to boot as they operate on a bad cop principle where they assume you're lying about your identity if you deny being their guy and berate you about being irresponsible repeatedly. Several of us spoke to them, but the caller was different every time, they're a call center too, and even though at first we took the time to convince them, or even provide evidence, every time they told us they'd stop calling, we'd get another angry call asking for Justin the next day. I drew the line once their priority call fell on Amelia, who has the sweetest feminine voice imaginable, and the idiot on the other end accused her of being Justin McKenzie, at which point she turned on speakerphone, and I got to hear him scream she should pay his bills, or they'd make his parents pay them. I waved her to transfer it to me. Bitewave, Justin McKenzie speaking, please hold. Boss, the hell? How are we going to get them to stop calling now? Bitewave, I'm just messing with them now, I had to talk them down once already, it's enough. Their outbounds all go through a single number, we can block it. Boss, how do you know? It's a confidential number, for all we know each of them could have their own line. I point at one of my screens, where I have a chat session open with a friend at switchboards. Bitewave I am inbound call at triple x 555-8080 received at 1027. I need to know if the caller's number matches other calls we got at this number on, timestamps of the tickets for three other calls we got from them. Switchboards I am seconds. Switchboards I am yeah. Confidential number, it's triple x 1820 Boss. Good work. Thanks, about time this ends. I call switchboards with the muted collection call agent on the other line listening in. Bitewave, hey man. I need a corporate wide ban from inbounds from that line you sent me, triple x 555 1820. Hell, let's throw in the subcontractors too. Switchboards, sure thing. I just need a ticket for the records. Byte wave, sending now, I attach the wave file where they're accusing Amelia of being a guy named Justin who owes them some money and threatened her parents. Switchboards, you're kidding me. Why didn't she just explain that we're dollar telco and? Byte wave, believe me, we tried, I had four timestamps, remember? That's just about half of it. All that can be said in their favor is that I'd hate to owe them money. Not because they're good because they'd be too stupid to stop calling even once I paid my bills. Switchboards, done, they can't connect to any of our work lines anymore. I used the broadest ban available. As he says this, I see my muted line one just cut. Switchboards is extra effective. Bitewave, thank you. Next time you come out of the bunker, let's have some coffee. All of Bitewave's tales on TFTS. We need to translate all the procedures. Another story with a fair side of union at my Canadian telco. Boss, Bitewave, I need to see you. I just got a call from legal, we've put this off for a while, but we're going to need to translate all our procedures in French as soon as possible to comply with laws in a province where we operate. Bitewave, let's have a seat. I assume you're talking to me rather than Frank who is actually in charge of the procedures because I'm the one with perfect French who types 60 per minute, and you'd like me to be on it, maybe even do it all. He nods. Frank is awesome, but he doesn't speak one word of French. To be fair, he did try to say bonjour once, but it came out like he was on LSD. Bite wave, Frank. What's the word count on all the procedures we got? Frank, you mean in remedy or everything? Bite wave, do I mean in remedy or everything? The sad face my boss gives me is answer enough. Bite wave, everything. Frank, I really couldn't tell you, there's literally thousands and no unified system too. Bite wave, okay, what about just remedy? Frank, I really couldn't tell you, there's literally hundreds and no unified system too. Bite wave, you're my favorite smartass, Frank. 
Boss, either way, I have different professional aspirations for the coming year, we're going to need a workaround. I assume you got the call because handling procedures falls under senior staff's union job description? Boss, I like that I hardly even need to be in the room here. But yeah. I'm not thrilled about it either, I need you on way many other things, but I'm not sure there's a plan B here. Bite wave, let's think it through. It has to be done by someone who falls under the purview of this job description, fine open an interim position with a French exam added as an extraordinary qualification, as defined in the WC. Then put the interim guy on it for the next year. Boss, I thought about it, but they'd still need to pass the regular exams. Of course. That shuts down the pool considerably. Failure rate on our exams is well over 90%, because you need to get 75% on five different tests, internet, TV, landlines, mobile and psychometric, and we made the first four quite challenging on purpose. It's entirely possible there's nobody in the entire telco who'd be interested in that kind of grunt work while being able to pass and also being perfectly bilingual. And if we cheat on the correcting we could end up with a less than stellar employee being allowed to automatically get any real job that opens on our team once their seniority allows it. There's a moment of silence. Boss, unless we get a letter of agreement changing the job descriptions I don't really see a way out, and I really doubt the union would give that easily. And he's right, my boss was union senior staff for 15 years before he jumped over to the dark side, he knows the game. Frank, senior staff's not the only ones who get to edit policies though. Aren't we? I'm puzzled a second, Frank has been doing this for years, ever since. Oh. Frank, the department secretary used to do it before me. She's union, and it was in her job description too. We haven't edited them since 06, it should still be in there. Bitewave, I think I owe you one, Frank. I pull up the job descriptions and sure enough, it's still in hers. Her job is so specific she has her own job description. But any position can get interim staff, we can have a second one for exactly how long we need to. Bite wave, I need to know the requirements and exams for technical call center administrative assistant, it's not on this. I've seen them, but it was many years ago. Gotta make sure it's workable. Boss, I have no earthly idea where that's written down, I'll. Go get the seeker. Technical call center administrative assistant. Soon after we get the best news ever. It mostly boils down to being reliable, perfectly bilingual, and rapid typing. Perfect fit. Days later the interim position is up on the billboards and in the intranet. Took about six weeks to find the girl from CSR Sales, who fit the criteria and wanted to spend a year translating policies. It ultimately took more like 18 months, full-time work. And I'm so glad I didn't have to be the guy doing this mind-numbing work. The good news, all our policies are now bilingual have been for some time. The interim administrative assistant ultimately became permanent, and amongst other things translates new policies as Frank writes them up. All of Bitewave's tales on TFTS.